I'm Roderick. And I'm Eunice. And welcome to the El Bethel Church, where we're under leadership with Reverend Dr. Lawrence C. Glass Jr. and Lady Sandra Glass. This morning, you will be reading the scripture, and I'll be saying your prayer. Scripture will be coming from Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Most honor and gracious Lord. Lord, we come to you, Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father God, that you allowed us to see this day. We thank you for watching over all last night while we slumbered and slept. You touched us with your hand in mercy and woke us up right on time, and we thank you. Thank you. Now, Father God, I pray you just keep touching our leader, the Reverend Dr. Lawrence C. Glass, Jr. Bless him in a special way. Touch our first lady, Lady Sandra Glass, Father God. Mm -hmm. Let your love line protection be around both of them. Keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger, yes, Father God. Sir. I pray you just bless them as they lead the El Bethel Church. Yes, now, Father God, I pray you just touch our church. Ease like zero with our church, Father God. Pray you just touch in a special way. Let us be a church that stand on the corner of Grand River and Selma as a beacon of life, Father God, yes. for the community. And we just thank you for it right now. Yes, now, I pray God. you just bless each member, whatever the need may be, Father God. I know you know all about it. Yes. So I pray you just touch them, Father God. Father God, we thank you for bringing us to this pandemic season where so many lives have gone on, Father God, but you saw fit to let us see another day, yes, and we thank you. thank you. We just thank you, Father God, for blessing those families that lost loved ones. I pray you just comfort them, Father God, yes. as they go through this bereavement season, Father God. Let them know you haven't forsaken them or you haven't forgotten them. 
I pray right now you will bless the leaders of this country, Father God. I pray you just touch them in a special way as they get ready to prepare to lead this country. Mm -hmm. uh, Father God, let your love, love, and protection be around both of them, Father God. Now, Lord, we just pray you would just keep blessing this country with so much going on and so much going on around us, Father God. I pray you just move right now in a special way. We know that you're still in charge, Father God. And, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank now, Lord, as we go through this day, Father God, let the Holy Spirit lead and guide us, Father God. Touch someone. If there's someone who don't know your partner in the sin, mm -hmm. I pray you just touch them right now in a thank special you. way now, Lord. Yeah. Now, be prepared to hear the word, Father God. Bless the word. Anoint the word. Let the word penetrate our heart, Father God. Mm -hmm. They will not only be listeners of your word, but we'll be doers of your word. And we'll go out to a dying world that you are a living Savior. Mm -hmm. We do claim all this in your mighty and precious name. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for service? Yes. Well, here we go. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And a morning full of challenges. Here you are, you made it, you pressed on. And for that, I'm grateful, grateful, grateful to God for his grace, grateful to God for your faithfulness. As we uh, press on in this worship celebration, I wanna encourage you, if you haven't uh, yet, that you would join me in giving through our various means, whether it's through Givelify app, uh, and going to El Bethel to give your weekly, monthly, bi-weekly offering unto God, or going through Cash App, which is dollar sign El Bethel Retford, that uh, you might give, or through Zelle, or you go through our website and give there, that you would join me, as I've already given, my phone isn't in my hand, but I invite you to join and say to God through your giving, God, I appreciate you. God, I believe you. God, I'm investing in the kingdom. Say that to God through your giving today, that uh, God might continue to know he can trust you, that he can favor you, he can send his blessings to you and through you, that the world might be better, that church and the communities might be better, that you and your family might be better. So I invite you to, to join me in that process. In fact, I want to uh, pray over your gifts and pray over you before we even get to this worship uh, moment that God would uh, again pour his best out upon you and receive your gifts. Won't you pray with me? God, how we love you. We thank you for today. It's a wonderful day to be alive. It's a wonderful day to experience your great favor. God, just yesterday we saw in this area of Michigan, someone hit the jackpot. Someone hit the lottery to be a new billionaire. And many are excited about who that could be. God, I know you don't always work like that, but here's what I do know, that anybody who invests in the kingdom they are far, far more than a billionaire, for they have all your riches. And I am convinced, O oh God, that you will supply all of our needs, not according to our bank account, not according to our federal funds, not according to the lottery win, but you will supply all of our needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. So God, so your people would know that you are faithful, God, not that they would know, but that they might be reminded that you are faithful, God, as they give this morning, oh God, even today, even today, do one of those things that you do, one of those supernatural things. Do that thing that show them, oh God, that they really can't beat you giving. That when we sow, we reap. We don't give to get per se. We give because we love you. And we give because we believe in you. But you promise, you promise that if we sow the seed, we reap the harvest. God, you know the needs of your people. You've taken care of us so well in this pandemic, in this quarantine situation. And so we have no doubts that you'll do it again. I ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus, your son, our savior, 
Jesus to Christ. And while we're here, God, can I just ask you to bless our time of worship, bless our time in the Word, open up our eyes that we might see, hear, receive this Word on good ground, oh God. Save souls today, strengthen the saints. Let the Savior be exalted on high that we might be the men and women, children of God you called us to be. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray and we do give thanks. And the saints of God said amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're my God. Hallelujah, 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 you're my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Won't you sing with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're my God. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yes, I do. And I adore you. I adore you. I adore you. Yes, I do. One more time. Hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you're my God, hallelujah, 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 you're my God. Hallelujah, you're my God. Hallelujah, you're my God. Hallelujah, he is my God. What about you? Yes, yes, he is my God. From the book of Philippians, chapter 3, in verse 14. Put it in its context in a minute, but just want to read verse 14. And I want to entitle this message as we've been preaching on the theme that God gave us at the beginning of the year, forward. Just what does forward mean? Forward, and how do we go forward? We saw that God has and God will give us divine directions even in dark times. But to go forward, we must press beyond the pains of our past. We cannot get stuck in our past. We got to get past our past to move forward. We must not settle for our present. That no matter how good the present is or how long the present has been, we can't settle for where we are. To move forward means we must strive to what is yet ahead. And today I want to entitle this message Forward, Making Room for Your Future Best Self. Subtitle, The Best is Yet to Come. 
Our passage here from the New King James Version says, I press toward the mark. I, I blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Every now and then, the mouth get twisted. And I done read this verse over and over. Allow me to start over. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That's the, NI, the, N, the New King James Version. The easy to read version says, I keep running hard toward the finish line to get the prize that is mine because God has called me through Jesus Christ to life up there in heaven, making room for your future self or your future best self. Listen, we are all called to be somebody. None of us are here by accident nor coincident. But believe it or not, it wasn't by happen chance. It wasn't uh, just by chance if, you know, for your mother and father to meet one another and for that particular egg to be met by that particular sperm that came together that produced you or me. No, that was not by happenstance. Even though it may have looked that way from the human perspective, I am convinced that all that happens in our life is preordained by God. We do have some opportunities, we do have some responsibilities, as we shall see, that this life that we live here on earth is a relationship that combines God's favor and our responsibility. As I often like to say, while God can do anything, he won't do everything because he puts some things in our hands to decide. Yeah, we're, we're called to, to live a, a good life, a forward life. And the only way to reach our best self, the only way our, to reach our best self is to move forward, to move forward. Our young self, when we're young, we, we often uh, believe that our best days are ahead of us. And because we believe our best days are ahead of us, sometimes we waste our todays in our youthfulness. We waste our todays waiting on some glorious tomorrow, but we fail to realize that our todays are summation of all of our yesterdays. So likewise, our tomorrows will be made up of what we do in part today. As we get older in life, as we get older in life, our old self too often spend time reminiscing over what used to be and believing that what was, was as good as it get. And so we do little to seek or to strive for anything better because we often view our best days are behind us. But our text in the Bible would have us to know that the best is always ahead of us. And we have to do our part. And if we, if we want to choose, if we want to achieve our best, we must make room for our future. We must make room for our future best self. Yeah, we got to make room for our future best self. Uh, you, you know, when, when, when Jesus was, was invited there to that wedding and uh, uh, they ran out of, the, out of the joy juice, they ran out of wine and his mother tagged him, touched him and said, they out of joy juice, they need some help. Can you help them out? Jesus at first kind of brushed her off, but when he embraced the responsibility of the moment, he, 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 he told the servants what to do, but here's what, here's what Mary told the servants, whatever he say do, do. And what she in essence was saying, look, I need y'all to make some room for what he's about to do. And, and so Jesus said, well, if you want to make room for me, take the pots over there and fill them up with water. I simply said it to say that if you want your best self, you got to make room for your best self. You got to make some room, got to put forth some, some efforts. You, we, we, must, we must strive to reach our best self. And, and, and when we're trying to reach our best self, too often, like I said, the term relative, we compare our best self with our worst self. We, we, one, of the, uh, one is past tense, 
and, and the other is future tense, especially for those who love God and, and has given, given their life over to God, that we must always embrace that our best self, our future self, our God self is ahead of us. And I want to challenge you to, to, to reconsider being your best self and strive to be your, 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 your God self, your future self, to make room for what God wants to do in you, through you, and even in spite of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. The God, God is up to something in your life, and I want you to embrace the greatness within you. I call it the Godness within you, the part of you that God has placed within you that he wants you to see that's ahead of you, that have yet to come out of you yet. And so to reach your God self, your best self, your future self, you, you must embrace the truth that's in this text. This slice of scripture here contains all the ingredients that you and I need to reach and make room for our future self, for our better self. Three, three, three good, good nuggets you need to hold in your pocket that it tells us if we're going to reach and make room for our future self, there must be personal investment, there must be inner, an energetic drive, and then there must be a divine destiny. Let me unpack that for the moments that I'm before you, and we're going about our business in this worship day. Paul said, Paul says, I press toward the mark. If you're going to strive to be your best self, there must be some personal investment. Paul didn't say you press. He didn't say she press. He didn't say he press. He didn't say they or even we press. But Paul says I press. This is a personal, personal investment. If I, if I could go back and, and read verse 12 and 13, you, you see how personal Paul makes this. This is what Paul says, not that I have already attained or, in it, or, or am already perfect. I haven't got that. I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Paul, Paul says, something grabbed me, and I'm trying to grab that which has grabbed me. Some have, he, he said, it's, a, it's something personal here. He said, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended it. It's personal. It's personal. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. And here's verse 14. Again, it's personal. He said, I press toward the goal. Listen, you, you can't depend on anyone else to do what only you can do for yourself. Yeah, that, that if you want to make room for your future self, you have to invest in your future self. Here's my challenge for you today, that today, 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 can you say today? Yeah, today I want you, God wants you to do something today that your future self will thank you for when you get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You must invest in your future. You, you must invest in your future, your physical future, which means you need to take care of your health. You need to make sure you, you live right, that you eat right, that you exercise. You need to take care of your phys physical health. Get good sleep. You need to take care of your mental health. Stop, stop putting negative things in your mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Take care of your, of your uh, uh, invest in your emotional self. Make sure you're emotionally sound. Take care uh, and invest in your financial self. Don't, don't, don't just start spending, keep spending everything you get, but invest in your financial self. Stop working for money and let money start working for you. Invest in yourself. And yes, invest in your spiritual self with your prayer life and your Bible study. You, you need to invest in you. It's personal. It's personal. Listen, after admitting that he was not settling for what he already had, he, he did not believe he, and that he did not believe that he had arrived. That's why he said, forgetting those things which are behind, and I don't account like I've achieved anything yet. After admitting that he's willing to forget the past, he, he is now saying, I'm willing to personally invest in my future. He says, I, he declared, I press. This was personal for Paul, but it wasn't nothing new. Here in the book of Philippians, Paul kept this thing personal. It was personal to him that they had wrote to him, that they had communicated with him. They had shared their resources with him to keep the ministry going. 
It was personal to him. So he personally wrote back to them with his own personal investment and personal story. In chapter 1, he said, I thank my God. It's personal. Upon every remembrance of you, he said, I am confident of this very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you will perform it to the end. It was personal to Paul. He said, listen, but I want you, even though I've been through some things, he said, I want you to know, brethren, the things that have happened to me has actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. And even though you heard some negative things happen to me, I want you to know that it really helped the gospel. Yeah, he, he said, it's personal, it's personal. So personal, he said, that even though those negative things happen, he said, this is what I come to learn. For me to live is Christ. It's personal. It's personal. He said, because of his personal investment in his future and his personal investment in his best self, he said he'd been through some things. Talk about that in a moment. But he said, I've been through some things, and because I've been through some things, I've learned in whatsoever state I am in to be content. I know how to be a base, and I know how to abound in everything and all things. I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, to both to abound and to suffer. Why? Because personally, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. He even ends this letter by saying, my God, it's personal, it's personal. She'll supply all of your needs according to his riches. He would tell the, the saints in Rome, and I believe the Holy Spirit is telling you and I today in Rome, chapter, Rome, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he said, look, present your bodies a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service to God. See, to find God's best for you, to find your best for you, to find your future self, to make room for your future self, you got to give your present self to God. Yeah, you must give you to him. And can I say you need to give all of you to him? Yeah, if, if forward is where you're trying to go, if, if, you start, if, you, if you're tired of being where you are and you want to get out of it, then you got to move forward. you got to move forward. Let me open up this window for just a moment. I recall going... Uh, on a trip um, uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, have a caravan of cars, There's three, three of car loads of us going on this trip, and we ran to this real, real bad storm. And I was leading the, the caravan, ran to this real bad storm, and uh, a lot of cars stopped pulling over. They were pulling over under the bridge, you know, and, and waiting, trying to wait on the storm to pass. But I wouldn't stop. I kept moving forward and just slowed down and drove, but I kept driving through the storm. And after we, the storm eased up some, we got out of the storm, pulled into a rest area. The other one said, why didn't you pull over? Everybody was pulling over. I said, we pulled over. We've still been in the storm. That the way you get out of storm, get through the storm, you got to keep moving. Yeah, you got you to move forward. You got to move forward. Listen, if forward is where you're trying to get, then giving him you is not an option. It's not an option. You, you, you may not think much of you, but if you want, to, want your life to get unstuck, if you want to get beyond your past and beyond your present, you need to give him you. You may not think much of you, but he thinks so much of you, he woke you up this morning. He thinks so much of you, he made you in his image. He thinks so much of you that he had his son to come and die for you. You may not think much of you, but I dare you to give you, give him you. Yeah, give, give him, give him, give him you. You say, give him you, give me what? What should I give him, preacher? Here, here's what you give him your attention, give him your affection, give him your abilities, give him your priorities, give him your presence, give him your problems, your pain and predicament. Here's some. Give him your people, give him your children, give him your siblings, give him your parents, give him your coworkers, give him the people that's in your life. Give him you. Yeah, you, you, have to make, you have to make a personal investment in your future today. Do something today that your future self will thank you for. Yeah, personal, personal investment. Pa Paul says, I press, I, 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 I strive, I'm off and running, which tells me not only must I have a personal investment if I'm going to make room for my future, I need an energetic drive. Yeah, I, I, I need an energetic drive. I, I, I need something that pushes me beyond my natural abilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need something that will take you beyond your comfort zone, something that will drive you beyond what's convenient and comfortable. 
but beyond something that's close and colorful. No, you, you, you need something that, that drives you beyond your natural self. Creative people, cre- creative people will tell you that there are some creations that come real quick, that come real easy. Uh, uh, any artist, any, any singer, any musician, any preacher, anyone that has creativity will tell you that some creativity comes real easy, but then uh, some others you have to work at. You have to work at beyond your, your, your natural strength. You, you have to work at, and, and, and it looks easy to others, but, but it's not easy to the artist. They have to labor behind it. And, and to reach your God self, your best self, your future self that, that you have yet to see, you must embrace the truth that's in this text. You have to press on. Yeah, you, you need something that you are committed to that, that makes others wonder where you get that drive from. What makes you stay up late at night doing that? What makes you spend long hours doing that? Paul says, I press. Now, now, now the Greek word here uh, uh, means, has several nuances. One, one, it means to pursue, to go after something, to go, to go after something with, with some energy, to go after something. It, it's, it's also an athletic term in the Greek, which means to sprint to the finish line. It means you see the finish line and you're trying to sprint to the finish line. Those of you who know me know I, I've ran several uh, half marathons, half marathons, half marathons. I'm only half crazy. I ain't all the way crazy. I ran half marathons, and usually that's 13, that's 13.1 miles. And usually by the time I get to mile 12, I got very little left in the tank. But the runner's motto is always finish strong. That no matter what you're doing, no matter what's going on, when you get to the end of your race, when you can see the finish line up ahead of you, you are to finish strong. And so, so you're supposed to run to the end. You ain't supposed to walk across the line. Of course, that's the only way you get past there, get through there, then get through there that way. But I always try to finish strong, and when I can't run to the finish, I'll skip to the finish because I am pushing myself, even though I may not be able to push myself through my normal trot or my normal run, I found that I can find the energy that I need just by skipping one step at a time. Yeah, to, 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 to press on means, mean, means to sprint to the finish line. This, this word, uh, uh, press, also means to put energy in to get over or to get by whatever may be in front of you. It, it is to get by the obstacle, the opposition, or the obstruction that stands between you and your goal or your achievement. Yeah, to, to press on, it takes some creative juices. It takes some creative juices. If, it, if you ask David, he would tell you that a slingshot and a stone was not the traditional way you take down a giant. No, but, 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 but an energetic drive, it, it takes an energetic drive to come up with some creative ways to overcome things that you wouldn't normally overcome. Yeah, it, it, takes, some, 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 it takes an energetic drive to come up with some out-the-box thinking that, that'll get you to dig around or dig through to walk over or to speak to the enemy or the opposition that stands between you and what you're trying to get to. Paul says, I press, I press, I press. I wish somebody would say, I press. Because see, when, when, God, when, when Paul says, I press, he, he meant just that. He, he meant that it was a struggle. It, it meant it was a strain. It meant that he worked at it. You see, he, he made it to Rome. He wrote this letter to the Philippian church from a Roman jail cell. He made it to Rome. His desire was to get to Rome. His desire was to get to the capital of the then known world, which was Rome itself. He wanted to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Roman citizens, to the capital of the world. He, he wanted Jesus Christ to be known in the palace. He wanted Jesus Christ to be known in the streets around the palace. He, he had no idea how he would get there, but he wanted to get there. He wanted, he wanted to get there. He, he wanted to get there, and he did get there. And he didn't get there the way he thought he was going to get there. He was serving the king of kings. He was going to see the king of Rome, the, 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 the pharaoh, uh, of the leader, Caesar of, of Rome, and he thought he might get a, 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 you know, some kind of escort or at least an audience would see that he had no idea he was going to get there the way he got there, but he did. And listen, listen he, he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he tells us of some of the ways he had to press on. Because 
Things God wants to get out of us don't naturally just come out of us. Some things we have to press on through. Listen to what Paul says on how he got to Rome. He says, I've been in prison. I've been hurt. I, I, I've been near death many times. He said, five times I was whipped with 39 stripes. Three times I was beaten with a rod. He said, I, I was almost killed by being stoned to death. Three times I was in a shipwreck. Uh, and one of those times I spent a day and a night, uh, a day and a whole night in, in, the, in the sea. Yeah, he said, I, I, I've been through some things. I, I had to press on. He said, I've been traveling, and I have had dangers from the rivers. I had dangers from rebels. I had dangers from thieves who tried to steal from me. I had dangers from my own people. I had dangers from foreign people. I have had to press on. I've had dangers in the city. I've been in dangers in the desert. I've been in dangers with people who pretended to be believers. I've had uh, dangers with those who, uh, who didn't believe at all. He said, I've done hard work, tiring work. Many times I couldn't sleep. He said, I've been hungry and I've been thirsty. I've been cold. I've been without clothes. I had many other, pres many other problems. Even so, even I even had the problem of caring for churches that I started and caring for believers and watching some believers fall by the wayside and some believers walk away and somebody walk in sin. He said, I have all of that stuff. But in spite of all of that, Paul said, I still press. You, you, you know, we, we have a hard day and we have a, a Job like experience where it seems like one thing after another, after another, after another goes wrong. Sometimes we feel like we deserve to be bad. But Paul said, no, I, in spite of all those bad things, all those challenging things, I do not stay down when I fall down. I get up and I press on. Paul said, Paul, Paul, Paul had the drive, the energetic drive to press on or to push on. Just as recently we installed our new president, Joseph R. Biden. And when Joseph R. Biden became uh, a congressman, when he first got elected in the office, he was 23 years old, said he was the youngest congressman at the time, youngest ever at the time. He stayed in politics and made a couple of runs at presidents. Didn't make it, didn't, didn't make it. Finally, in 2008, he got selected by Barack Obama to be his, his vice president and run with him, and they won. And Joseph R. Biden, uh, R. Biden had, had the opportunity for eight years to watch history unfold as the first African-American president of the United States of America who, who was built on the back of slaves. And, and now this, this, uh, this African-American man whose father was from Nigeria, this African-American man is now leading the nation and Joseph Biden is his vice. For eight years, for eight years, everybody know, everybody know, every vice president, if they're successful and stay clean and their president uh, stay clean, when their run is over, the vice president is tagged to be the next president for their, for their, uh, uh, for their party. But Joseph Biden decided not to run in 2016. He decided not to run for president because he felt it was time for a female to be president, and Hillary Clinton, he thought, would make a real good woman president, a real good president, woman or not. She'd just make a good president. So he opted not to run. He, he said, look, I've done a good deal. I've been in this game a long time. I've been on both sides of the, of, the, of the aisle. I've negotiated contracts. I've done well for the country. I've served Barack Obama for eight years. I'm good. I'm good. Y'all go ahead and, and do what y'all do. I'll support you. But then, you know, you know, the, Hillary was not chosen by the people of America. They weren't ready for a female president. And Joseph was kind of disappointed that he did not make the run. But he said his choice is his choice. And he was through with politics. He was retired and, as a politician until he heard the former president talk about there were good people on both sides in a racial issue. And he knew that wasn't true. And he knew what he said, that the soul of America, the character of America was on the line, and he had to get back in the game. And he got back in the game at a ripe old age of about 76, 77 years old. He got back in the game as the oldest man to ever run for president. He got back in the game. He got back in the game. And, and, and the rest, you know, you know is, is history because Joseph, Joe Biden got back in the game because he had an energetic drive. 
that drove him, that pushed him to get back in the game in spite of his age, in spite of folks making fun of his age. He got back in the game and he won. That's what you and I need. We need an energetic drive that goes beyond our physical ability. And if you want to move forward and make room for your future, make room for your best self, uh, you, you, you must make a personal investment, but you must also have an energetic drive that pushes you beyond the convenient, that pushes you beyond the comfortable, that pushes you beyond the classy and the colorful, and even uh, the, the most uh, uh, clear thing that folks would think you ought to do, that you must push beyond till you get to the Christ thing God has for you to do. Which brings me to my last point, that if you're going to make room for your future self, there must be a personal investment. You can't assign this to somebody else. You've got to do it. There must be an energetic drive. You've got to get off your blessed assurance and stop being so lazy. Stop waiting on something to come to you. You've got to go get it your own self. There must be an energetic drive. There must be a personal investment. But then you've got to have a divine destiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have a goal in mind. You got to have a destination, a parking spot. You, 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 need, you need something with some directional pull that, that gives you an ultimate, dust, uh, ultimate destination that says God is in this, that God wants me to be here. Because where God would have you to be, he going to open doors for you. Where God will have you to be, he going to make a way for you. Where God will, will have you to be, he'll make your enemies bless you when you get you to your divine destiny. You see, life it's not some scavenger hunt to see who can get, who can find the most things the fastest. No, 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 no. The, the, the amount that you acquire, hear me, young people, the amount that you acquire and the time in which you acquire them, that only matters in sports. And if you think life is a sport game, then better remember what Jesus said. What would it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his own soul? Listen, listen again to what, what Paul said. Pa Paul says, I press, yeah, 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 toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God. He, the, the easy to read verse said, I'm running hard toward the finish line to get the prize that is mine. He, pa Paul says, I'm not running aimlessly. No, he had a goal in mind. He wanted a prize that was only found in the upward call of God. He, 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 wanted, he wanted that. It, it, it was only found in following God's voice and God's choice for him. This divine destiny is the only way to make room for your future self. It's the only way to make room for your future self. You got to make sure that where you are going is where God wants you to go. One of the worst scenarios in life is to spend your whole life uh, uh, climbing up a ladder trying to get the, the corporate ladder of success only to get to the top and find out that the ladder is leaning on the wrong building. Jesus encountered a man one day who had been impressed with Jesus teaching about eternal life and this this was a young man. This, this young man had accumulated many riches in, the, in his young years. And he met Jesus and decided to ask Jesus how to get the one thing that he did not have. And that was a divine destiny, eternal life. The eternal life that Jesus had been talking about. He knew that his soul needed some place to go. Perhaps he had heard Jesus ask that question, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his own soul? And he knew he needed some place for his soul to land. And so he asked that question, so what must I do to inherit eternal life? So what must I do to inherit eternal life? That, that young fella has some good theological insights. That's right here in the text I'm sharing with you today. That fella ha had some good theological insights. He understood personal investment. He said, what must I do? He, he, he knew that if, it was, if he was going to get eternal life, it wasn't something that his mama going to get for him or his daddy going to get for him. It wasn't something that his neighbor going to get. He had to do it. He, he understood personal investment. What must I do? Yeah. And, and then he had that energetic drive. He knew some energetic drive. He said, what must I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he had. He, he's right there in my text. He, he preached it before I preached it. He said, listen, I understand personal investment. I, I understand energetic drive. Do. But, but, but if, and, and of course, if, if I put it in, in, in contemporary terms, what I'm talking about today, he might say, what must I do to move forward to my best future self? What, what must I do to move forward for my best future self? And Jesus' response to him was to save yourself. Give up all 
that yourself have accumulated. Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And you know what riches do and popularity do? It'll fool you into thinking, first of all, that it'll satisfy you forever. When you know it don't, that's why you want some more. Yeah, it, it, it'll fool you, and it'll fool you that perhaps you're going to live longer than you are. No, no, it's not, not happening not happening today or any other day. And the deceitfulness of riches fooled this young man, and he walked away from being his best self. He walked away the way too many people walk away today. Walk away from God's design for your life to be your best self because you're settling for your today self. And I want to tell you, God wants me to tell you that there's a better you inside of you and that if you're going to get there, you got to make sure that your destination is not built on your flesh. Yeah, 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 because our, our best self can only be found in one place, be found in Christ. He said, listen to what he says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God that is in uh, Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah, in Christ Jesus, that, that your best self, my best self is only found within Christ. And then within Christ is a partnership. Well, he favors me, but I still have to have the fortitude to get up and do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, he, he, he as I say, he, he do anything, but he won't do everything. I do my part, and he do his part. That's what we talk about in, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. He said, God said, if my people, if, if they, if, who are called by my name, if they humble themselves, if they pray, if they seek my face, if they turn from their wicked ways, then I, he says, will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sins, and then I will heal their land. It's a partnership. You got to do your part. You, you got to have some personal investment. You, you got to do your part. You got to have an energetic drive. What, what's your passion? That's why I always ask people, what is your passion? What is it that pushes you? What is it that drives you? What is it that keeps you up late at night? What gets you out of bed? What puts a smile on your face? Passion ain't something you get from, from, from Walmart or, or Sam Club. Passion ain't something you get just from your parents. Passion is something that God puts on the inside of you. Passion is a clue to God's purpose for you. What is your passion? But then you got to make sure that you ain't just on a joy ride. The life has a destination. If you want to be and find your best self, your future self, you got to make room for it. You got to make room for it. By doing something today that your future self will thank you for when you get there. I'm so grateful. I am. I'm, I'm so grateful that I chose to honor my parents. I chose to do the right thing that they thought I was doing. I didn't always do everything they thought I was doing, but I tried to make them proud. I made that choice. And one choice led to another choice, and led to another choice. So ultimately, I found Jesus because what my mama had taught me, that you got to make this decision. You got to make room. And here's what I found. When you make room, more room will come. You got to make a decision. Years ago, a man by the name of Edward Moat, young fella, wasn't raised in church. In fact, the record is, the history book says, his parents owned a pub or a bar in a town in England. At 15, Edward was going down the street, and went by a church, and heard this popular preacher of his day preaching, and Edward gave his life to Christ. At 15, became a carpenter. And as he became a carpenter, that's where he made his living. Eventually got called in the ministry, became a pastor of a Baptist church over there. But before he was a pastor of a Baptist church, read he, he took pen to paper and he wrote some words that still live today that spoke of how he felt 
about the change that God had made on his life and his commitment to reach his best self. He understood that the bar didn't work because he saw his parents live a life in the bar his whole childhood. He understood carpentry wasn't the end of all things because sometimes he messed up while he was building things. He understood that, that being the biggest person or the most popular person in the city didn't amount to anything because the same people who lift you up and knock you down. So he took pen in the paper and he wrote these words, my hope is built <laughs> on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. The solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Verse 2 said, when darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy, gale, stormy day, my anchors hold within the veil. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Sand, yeah, all of the ground is sinking sand. The last verse, he says, when he shall come with, with trumpet sound, oh, may I, be, may, may I in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before his throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand, is sinking sand. If you want to reach, if you want to reach your best self, your future self, you you got to make room for him. You got to make room for her. When the widow came to the prophet and said, "My my husband was one of your students, and my husband has died and left us in debt, and his debtors, the creditors, are coming after me." and my boys, to take me and my boys, slave, can you help an old lady out? The prophet Elijah told us that you need to make room <laughs> for your future. He said, go get some pots. Go borrow pots from your neighbor, empty pots. All he was saying, look, there's something coming your way. There's something coming your way. There's something coming your way. You got to make room. You got to make room. She went and borrowed pots from every neighbor in the neighborhood, told her sons, Go borrow pots from every neighbor in the neighborhood. And she brought those pots and she took that little bit of oil she had and it just kept flowing. It just kept flowing and kept flowing and kept flowing. Don't you know if she hadn't went out and borrowed those pots, she wouldn't have had no room for her future. No room to pay her debts. No room to take care of her children. No room to have a great retirement. If you want to see your best life, you want to see your best self, you want your future self, you want your God self, you have to make room. That's why you go to school, you make room. That's why you go to work, you make room. That's why you work at relationship, you're making room. That's why you network, because you're making room. That's why you pray, because you're making room. That's why you read the word, because you're making room. Do something today, today that your future self will thank you for. God, we love you. We thank you for this awesome word. We thank you for challenging us to not settle for our present self, nor be held hostage by our past self, but to recognize that the best is still yet to come. You called Jeremiah when he was yet in his mother's womb. You used Moses when he was 80 years old. Nobody's too old, nobody's too young for them to reach their future self, their best self. As long as we got breath in our body, God, you're still up to something good. And we're grateful, oh God, that the best is yet to come. We're grateful that we have a Savior who showed us the principles of this text. And we have a Savior 
who put in his personal investment that when you said, who shall I send? Who will go for us? He volunteered. He didn't send some other angel. He came himself, found the womb of a virgin by the name of Mary. Thank you, God, that he, he showed his own personal investment in us. He was the one who could bring unity back in the universe. He was the one who could unite a holy God with a sinful man. Thank you, God, for his personal investment. Thank you that he had the energetic drive to leave the presence of heaven, to leave the, the, the Father's face, to leave the angelic assistance, oh God, and come down to earth and live his life. He had the, the energetic drive to get through childhood, get through infancy, get through adolescence. He had the energetic drive to wait until it was his time to shine. He had the energetic drive to help folks that couldn't help him back, to open up blind eyes, to heal lame legs, to fix broken hearts. He had the energetic drive to, to cast out demons and to raise up the dead. He had the energetic drive not to fight the way the world fights, but to tell his own slow disciples, put up your sword. I didn't come to fight like that. He showed us how to live this life. He had the energetic drive to go ahead and give his life that we might have a right to the tree of life. He had that divine destiny that his future self would always look better than his old self. For there on the cross, he gave his life. To show us, oh God, that if we're going to reach our best self, we got to give you all of us. The cross wasn't the end of him, for three days later he got up that example of Jesus, God, let it always reign in our soul. Let it always be visionized in our minds that we may press forward to the goal, to the high call that you have in all, each and every one of us. Today, God, I believe you're calling somebody to be saved, you're calling somebody to give up their wayward ways, give up their wicked ways. You're calling somebody to quit trying to fix life and find life themselves. You're calling somebody to do like that, that, that young rich soldier to give up everything they have and trust you. So God, I pray for their salvation. I pray for those that have walked away that they might come back. I pray that they would sign on, that they would text the church, call the church, and say, I want to be saved. I want to get back in church. I need to get back in church. I need my best self to come out. My, my family needs me. My children need me. My children's children need me to be my best self. So Holy Spirit, wherever they are, speak in their language, and God convict them, hear their cry, put angels in their paths, that they might respond to this word, even more so respond to your will and your word for them. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray and we do give thanks. Saints of God said amen. Praise God. I pray you're giving God some praise right where you are, at home, on the job, wherever you are, for this word. As you take in 2021, the word is forward. That you and I might get through the storm that we've been going through, not by pulling under some, some overhead for shelter, but by pressing on that God's glory might be seen in us. Again, remember the ministry highlights. Remember to give God your gifts through tithes and offering to give the fire sign. Uh, uh, page perhaps to come on, but just worship God through your giving. Worship God through your life. Until next time.
Listen, if you're tired of being where you are and you need something different at this stage in your life, listen to what Jesus said over 2,000 years ago. He said, come to me, all of you who are tired from the heavy burden that you've been forced to carry, and I will give you rest. So I want to invite you today to just come just as you are. God loves you just the way you are. He just loves you too much to leave you that way. So won't you come? If you're thirsty, come. If you're hungry, come. If you're broke and broken, come. If you're tired and weary, you can come. He said, come now and let us read them together and though your sins be bright red, I'll wash them white as snow. He said, come while it's day, for the night is going to come when you won't be able to come. So won't you come to him who came for you he came as a baby. He lived as a servant. He died as a man. But he got up as a God, because that's who he is. And make no mistake about it, he came for you. He lived for you. He died for you. He got up for you. He left for you. He's praying for you. And he's coming back again for you. So won't you come to him today? 
He woke you up this morning to come. He spared your life so you could have this opportunity to come. He made a way for you to hear this and see this today so that you could come. My recommendation is that you would come who have not yet come to him. Right where you are, you can pray this simple prayer. Father, forgive me for all of my sins. I believe Jesus is your son. I believe he loved me, he came for me, and he died for me. And I believe he got up from the dead. And I believe he's coming back again. Father, please come into my heart. Come into my life and make me what you'll have me to be. I surrender my all to you. In the name of your Son, and my now Savior, and Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. So glad to have more family members. God wants us all saved. But everybody won't be, but I'm glad that you are. So now can I encourage you to find a church home that you could connect with, and you can learn more about God, and learn more about prayer, and the Bible, and Jesus, and most of all, Learn more about God's will for your life. I promise you, God wants more for you than you want for you. I asked you to come today because I came, and he made such a wonderful difference in my life and in the lives of millions of others. I know he's going to do the same for you. Peace.